Hello and welcome to UFC Connected. I'm Brendan Fitzgerald, and here's what's coming up on today's show. An all-access look at the highly anticipated debut of British sensation Patty the Batty Pimblet. Oh! Phantomweight champion Aljamain Sterling and Ally Aquinta join teammate Marab Dawalish Willie on his homecoming tour of Georgia. The whole trip was packed from beginning to end because every day was an adventure. Li Jingliang details his relationship with head coach and Chinese MMA pioneer Zhang Tiachuan. And Pyotr No Mercy Yan looks back at his memorable UFC debut. That's it! Wow! Peter Yan gets the TKO victory! Welcome to the UFC. Liverpool's Paddy the Batty Pimblet grew a massive cult following in the UK. And once he made the move to the UFC, fans needed less than one round to see why. The former Cage Warriors King signed to the UFC earlier this year and kicked off his run in style against Luigi Ventramini at the UFC Apex. The proud scouser sent the MMA world buzzing once again with a spectacular performance. Let's see how it went down on Paddy Pimblet's debut day. Yeah, it's gonna look really bad. 2009, me and Paddy met um, when you walked in the gym. We just had to open a mind. We talked about star quality and star quality. One thing about Paddy is like he loves to fight. It's just like it's his thing he loves to do. He doesn't get as nervous as other people do. He just brings like an excitement. That's the one thing that I'm expecting to see tonight in the cage. A lot of excitement, a lot of flash, a lot of flair, but ultimately looking for the finish. Just another day at the office, lad. This is not new to me. I'm gonna steal the show, lad. You know what I mean? By the time tomorrow morning comes or later on tonight, everyone's going to be talking about me. That's simple. A good late morning to you from the fight capital. We are in Las Vegas, Nevada for another UFC fight night. Kind of feels like we've been in England all week, Mike. Huh? You must feel right at home. Oh, listen, it's the British invasion, as we know, supposed to be in London, but sadly couldn't take place. But we're here, we're in Las Vegas. The British are coming, so be careful, boys. Oh. <laughs> Having the meal together, it's really good because they bounce off each other. Part of a team, part of a family, so it, it means more to them. And Paddy, he's fighting Luigi Vendramini. He's a very good striker, playing Jiu Jitsu black belt. I'm expecting Paddy to make Luigi make a mistake early on and then make him pay for it. I know what I'm doing, lad, I'm going in there. Welcome to the UFC. We don't want to kill him, but go get a victory. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys in a little bit. See you in a bit, fella. Thank you. Go do the business. Well, we are not in London, England, but I'm not sure Molly McCann has ever been this excited to make a walk and compete on the greatest proven ground in the sport. Megan O'Leary, Molly McCann, seventh UFC appearance, says her up. Oh! Ooh. Oh, my goodness! Oh, that's it, Mo. Here we go. Look at Molly, though. Look, she's like a woman possessed in there. I mean, she's. Oh! oh! What happened there? Flash of red, the oh! oh! Oh, my goodness. Nice left hand connection and a right for McCann. Oh! Molly, she's an animal. Oh! Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 right, Molly McCann. So here he is, Patty the Batty Pimblets. 
16 and three, former Cage Warriors featherweight champion. He believes he is ready to put his proverbial best foot forward. Yeah, there's been so much hype around this man, of course, because of the way he fights and the exciting style that he has. He feels as though he will be the face of the UFC. This kid has something, man. If he has fighting ability to match, he will be something to deal with. Luigi, ready? Patty, ready? Fight's on. Well, that's a nice head kick that just landed. Oh! And a jumping switch kick. Ah, that chin's up a little bit for Patty. Yeah, it is. Gotta be careful. Luigi has great hands. That's that chin up in the air, Mikey. I, I told you, man. Better listen, that chin. You gotta be careful when you get to the UFC. I said to him, I said, listen, Patty. there's many people sat here and been full of confidence, but when they get to the UFC, it doesn't go their way. Why are you gonna be any different? So some early UFC adversity, 90 seconds into the career for Patty Pimblett. Oh! oh I tell you one thing, Pimblett is though. Mike, he's a fighter. Oh, Look at that. Declaring the winner by TKO Patty, the Patty Pimblet. I'm here with the winner, Patty the Patty Pimblet. Patty, what did I tell you, Mike? Me and you will be having this conversation after the first round finish. And what happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. You almost got knocked out. You got caught with a beautiful left hook. But come on, hey, listen, uh, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, and you finished in style. You know me saying, lad? I'm a scouser. We don't get knocked out. <laughs> hey, I take that <laughs> all day. Put it together for Paddy. Good morning. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good Good to see him like defend himself in the UFC, take it good, get back up on his feet, and then straight on him, put him away. Fantastic. I'm not just a fighter, I'm a showman, and people appreciate that. And as I say, I'm I'm the new face of the UFC. You better get used to it because the man's arrived. Me both. What are you saying, lads? What's that? Come in, lads. Give us a squeeze, my guy. Yeah. We took over the world tonight, oh, lads. Brilliant. Yeah. I met this lad 12 years ago and we said to each other we'd be in the UFC. We took over Vegas tonight. Yeah. Can we have the whole fight team then? Yeah. Lads, come Hesky. The fighting pads in Liverpool. Ah! We did it again! I've just come out there and absolutely starched the man. It was never going to happen any other way. I was always coming to steal the show and get a spectacular performance, and that's what I've done. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to the hotel and get told I've got a 50 grand bonus waiting for me, and that's what I'm going to be doing every fight, coming for that bonus. That's simple. The nation of Georgia, a neighbor of burgeoning Dagestan, has emerged as a hotbed of MMA talent in recent years. One of the country's most prominent stars is Marab Dawalish Willie who recently returned to his home country with teammates Ally Aquinta and UFC Bantamweight champion Aljamain Sterling. The trio embarked on a week-long journey around Georgia exploring the food, culture, and booming MMA scene. The Funk Master takes us through the highlights of the trip in Ultimate Access. Fighting out of WC Georgia, Marab Walishwili! Rob is a teammate of ours that we met through the MMA scene, came down and trained with us, and uh, he's been a part of the family ever since. Rob's been trying to get us out to Georgia for a couple of years now, and we finally got out there. 
since my trip to Georgia, to be honest with you, I didn't know what to expect when we went out to Georgia. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know what the people were gonna be like, but I was like, if they're anything like Marab, it's gonna be a good time. When we landed in Georgia, we had a pretty much a hero's welcome. Marab is like the mayor over there. Anywhere that man walked, people recognized him right away. It just shows how tight-knit the community is. <laughs> The whole trip was packed pretty much from beginning to end because every day was an adventure. You get to appreciate the beauty of the planet, the beauty of the country, beauty of the land. Being able to take it all in, it's kind of like a little peace of mind to kind of relax a little bit. Almost like getting away from the everyday stresses of life. A lot of the times we spent eating. We got to eat a lot of just different foods from the Republic of Georgia. It was cool to just go over there and check that out and hang out with some of his people from his country. During our trip, we went to a couple of different gyms. If you guys know me, I like to teach. Elbow, close. We did a couple seminars, and it was cool just to be able to spread our knowledge and some of the information we learned from other people or some of the stuff that helped made us successful in the UFC. They brought it all out for us. They brought the cake. They brought big blown up posters. Not many people go out of their way to give you a, a home welcome like that. So after we do the seminars, Marab goes, oh, sorry brothers, uh, we have one more thing we have to do. And then Al and I look at each other. <laughs> One of the guys on the talk show, he dressed up in a robe. Once you see him, you just start laughing. You can't help but laughing to see him the get up he comes out with. He wanted to challenge me, and uh, I don't think it would have went well for him. <laughs> it was just funny just to have a good laugh on the talk show. One of the other activities that we got to do was white water rafting. My first time doing it, I never did it in the States. That got the adrenaline rushing a little bit because the water was cold, splashing all over the place. Push! Push! <laughs> <laughs> we went over to the Kasbegi Mountains. We were pretty much in the clouds. That's how high we were. We got to do a couple of workouts. Rob, of course, ran down the mountain, ran back up the mountain. That was his workout for the day. And then we got to go to one of the cliffs by the beach. we got to travel to Marab's village. We got to see where he grew up. It 
was just a, a warm welcoming into their home, into Marab's family and everyone that he knows in that area. There was a lot of food to go around for a lot of people. Food just keeps coming out the back room from somewhere. And when I say there was a lot of wine, there was a lot of wine to go around. Huh? Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> His family still uses the old school way of making it. So the wine is processed underground in this clay thing that keeps all the air out, keeps all the bugs out. That's how they process and ferment the wine. Yes. I tried my best not to drink too much of it, but that's what got me on the dance floor, you know? So I had to get a little loose. <laughs> I think I might have danced with his uncle and he showed me how to do the Swanetti dance and showed me how to really move my hands and kind of move the shoulders. So we had a good time. I think this trip to Georgia definitely brought Iquinta, Marab, and I all together a lot closer. For all three of us to have this one week where we could all put aside and go hang out and just kind of unwind, that was a very important moment for all of us and definitely moments we're never going to forget. Li Jingliang has been proudly flying the flag for China and the UFC since 2014. The fan favorite continues to climb the welterweight rankings under the guidance of his head coach Zhang Tiachuan, the first Chinese fighter to compete in the octagon. Together, the duo are determined to bring China their next UFC champion and inspire the next generation of fighters from the region. If Shinya 我之前没看过他比赛但是呢我知道他是保留高的队员嘛因为他没练过巴西柔术没练过地面三波啥的我觉得就上去就不一会儿就被人终结或者是被人锁了那场比赛第一回合十分钟非常厉害我们看到俄
，有可能不练了吧，回家了。我说，我现在自己成立俱乐部，能不能把他们叫过来？我说，他说行啊，一打电话，立即两个白银的那套，两人从新疆坐火车过来。教练叫我们做什么就做什么。教练说来到北京，他说好啊，那我们就去北京训练，就这么简单。因为这项运动，这项 MMA， 我才把李李锦亮从新疆交到北京，所以说这项运动也是我们的一个共同的目标，尤其是我们要打造出一个 UFC 冠军，也是我们一个共同的目标。所以说，一个是人民，一个是这项运动，把我们紧紧的绑在一起。如果说没有铁哥，没有全天下，中国很多这种运动员都不会有。张铁拳就是中国 UFC 第一人。这个打 UFC， 我才是慢慢意识到，那我应该在这个行业里做出一点成绩。很高兴啊，中国第一打 UFC 的人，然后我们一起训练，然后为梦想。那时候我觉得，这个 MMA 才是真正的融入到我的血液里。我是第三个签约 UFC 的中国人。Entering into the UFC and China is really starting to make its mark in mixed martial arts. 进去美国拉斯维加斯打第一场比赛，我觉得这才是我 MMA 生涯刚刚开始。Here we go! Jingliang landed two good, solid punches there. Oh, standing in the pocket, swinging away. Both guys exchanged. 第一场比赛反正是我受受过最大的伤吧，就是这个，没公开了，啊，缝了九针。然后就是我觉得，哇塞！这里面的人真的太厉害了，觉得自己还很渺小、很菜，需要更多的去努力，向他们学习的地方。李的李金利啊！从铁哥退出 UFC 之后，就我一个人在打 UFC， 大家都说你扛着中国的这个大旗，给你的压力也挺大的。我觉得做还是时刻保持自己做好自己就好了。所以说，那么多人去支持你，更要去努力。机会都是给准备好的人，你准备好了，机会就来了。成功的道路上都会有磕磕绊绊，你越努力，你收获的成果就会越多。The inimitable Li Jingliang. There is no Chinese man who has accomplished more inside that octagon than him. Love the guy, right? Because he comes for war. He's got a head like a brick. He's got fists like rocks, and he comes for war every time. He's got such unorthodox striking skills. He has personality for days. There's so much about his fighting style that endears him to fight fans as well. A little bit of a wild man on the feet when he's fighting. You're watching. Nick. Nick. 不能再说是，只要你俩在一个平台上，只要你俩关在笼子里，他说了算，谁说了都不算。哇、wow, ！Are the dogs barking tonight? Li Jingliang。接下来的道路，坚持我现在所做的一切，直到退役的那天。体育就是青春，我这十几年、二十年的坚持，就是这几年所谓的十年磨一剑。我也希望能通过我的经历、我的经验，让更多的运动员去实现他们自己的梦想，对，能给中国搏击天才做自己一点小小的力量。从武到张伟丽拿 UFC 金腰带，甚至我们整个亚洲第一条金腰带，这都是我们中国 MMA 发展史上一个重大突破。我相信很快会有更好、更高的名次选手会出现。包括李金良在内啊，我觉得在中国，首先我们人口很多，喜欢这个行业的人也越来越多。在未来 ，UFC 可能有很多的优秀人员。时代在变，我们也在变。我相信这项运动会越来越普及，相信这项运动在中国肯定会有一席之地。In 2017, the UFC signed Pyotr Jan as one of Russia's hottest prospects. Jan would eventually deliver on the hype, going on to win the UFC Bantamweight Championship. But in his Octagon debut, No Mercy just wanted to make a statement, and he took full advantage of the opportunity with a first-round finish over a fellow knockout specialist. 
Jan takes us back to that special night in Singapore. This is day one. Я дрался в Сингапуре против Трута и Шихара. Это был мой дебют в UFC. Мой оппонент из Шихара на тот момент в UFC выступал уже очень долго. У него было очень много поединков. Он выступал боец, левша. У него есть нокаутирующая мощь. Он очень многих ребят нокаутировал в своих выступлениях. Конечно, были некие опасения, но в плане там тактики на бой, как работать с ним. Вот, но я ни в коем случае не думал, что он может меня в чем-то, так скажем, произойти. Welcome to the UFC, Peter No Mercy Yan, and what an act fight name that is for this 24-year-old Russian. He brings high pressure, aggression, wants to show his Siberian spirit. Да, конечно же, внутри меня были такие мысли, что да, это твой дебют UFC, нужно как-то более зрелищно себя там показать, да, зарекомендовать. Когда я вышел в октагон, мне казалось, что сегодня мой день, мое время, и я кайфовал от этого. First time he puts his feet on the octagon. Peter, no mercy, yeah. Мой план был поддавливать его всегда, так как левосторонняя стойка, он, ну, пинается часто, вот. Плюс у него длинные рычаги. Мне нужно было поддавливать его, чуть, так скажем, дистанцию заходить более среднюю, чтобы не давать ему пинаться ногами, чтобы не было у него, так скажем, пространства для, для работы ногами. Как только я подобрался к нему, еще повторюсь, нашел его голову. Да, я помню, как я попал ему несколько раз, потряс его, потом встал. So both of these guys show very solid chins. Oh, but he's just been this? dropped. Ishihara is looking to recover, but Peter Yan's not going to let him off the hook. Power, 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 all the way through these punches. Есть удар, который поражает сразу, а есть удары, ну, которые приносят ущерб. А есть такой накопительный эффект. Никогда не охочусь, не ставлю себе цель нокаутировать там, в каком-то раунде и так далее. Просто выхожу, бью то, что есть у меня внутри, и нокаутировал его. Ishihara gets back to his feet, making a real contest of this one. A real wake-up call for a guy that's not been knocked out before. Oh, and he goes down again! That's it! Wow! In his debut, Peter Yan gets the TKO victory. Welcome to the UFC. What a debut, what a statement. Я помню, насколько именно тренировочная подготовка была сложная. Были некоторые моменты в тренировочной подготовке, дебют, вся эта эмоциональная нагрузка. Когда подняли мою руку, завершил бой досрочно, я видел, как радуются мои друзья, как радуются мои главы и мой менеджер. Вот. Я сам очень радовался. Конечно, стараешься где-то сдерживать свои эмоции. Вот. Но в душе я был очень, так скажем, но наслаждался этим моментом и был полностью доволен выступлением. Congratulations, Peter Yan, a fabulous performance in his Octagon debut. That's all for this episode. We'll see you next time right here on UFC Connected. Thanks for watching.